So I just introduce myself briefly. So uh, I'm Italian, and uh, even if I moved to, to South France, where actually I'm uh, working in uh, Eurocom, is a research center um, where actually we design new system and new prototype for uh, uh, detecting, for example, web-based malware or for uh, reverse engineer um, binaries or for testing an application and so on. And um, I want to spend two words just uh, um, talking about uh, actually uh, what is uh, CSEC and why Eurocom is part of this, uh, of this network. So actually CSEC is a, a network of excellence in, uh, in system security in Europe. And um, the idea of CSEC is uh, to put together different uh, partners, as you can see up uh, on the first line. So we have different university and different research center uh, in Europe. Uh, and we collaborate among each other actually to, um, for two um, for two reasons. The first one is to create uh, actually a roadmap. That means that uh, we actually uh, want to uh, anticipate the attacks and vulnerabilities. So in something similar to the top 10 of OWASP, so actually we are uh, searching the new threats that there are uh, over the internet. And uh, the other idea is to have uh, what we call the, um, a common graduate degree uh, in the area. That means that in the different uh, university now are actually adopting uh, the, st the standard that we are designing. Um, so actually um, there are different degrees in system security now. And, uh, and uh, we want to have this degree common between the different universities. Um, another thing, so last one, I mean, if you like uh, uh, what I'm talking about and uh, what uh, actually we do in Europe, actually, we have some scholarships. Uh, so you can actually cover the travel and the unique expense for a short term, so like three, from three to six months. So you can actually apply for it on the internet side and you can actually come and join our, uh, our lab. You will be paid. Uh, I think uh, you, for, uh, for a three month, uh, uh, I mean, the scholarship should be maximum around 3,000 uh, uh, euros for, uh, uh, for six months, but you can even do three months. Okay, so let me, let me say that uh, uh, the web uh, has evolved from being a static collection of uh, pages. Let's think of uh, how it was the web uh, in, the, in the 70s. So it, it was just a mere uh, collection of, uh, of uh, HTML uh, pages. And now the web is... Uh, uh, it's really uh, complex, so there are a lot of complex applications that use uh, a lot of client side, for example, uh, scripting uh, languages. And um, the concept of that is that uh, uh, web security has evolved from being uh, um, um, yeah, evolved at the time that uh, now attacks against web app constitute about 60% of the attacks uh, on the internet. This is the uh, this is uh, from the sun stop cyber security risk. Yeah. And we can even think of, uh, of uh, what OWASP is actually doing uh, to, to bring uh, uh, web security um, uh, to companies. And uh, application now of the web uh, target for hosting uh, uh, direct web download uh, content or for hosting, for example, server for managing large uh, scale botnets or even for spreading uh, malware that target your browser, for example, keylogger or network logger. So, uh, so webs in, in the era of web security, uh, a lot of work has been done to detect uh, uh, different type of uh, injection vulnerabilities that everybody knows, like you know, SQL injection, uh, cross site scripting, or standard common injection vulnerabilities. And there are also a lot of uh, projects, either uh, from an academic point of view or from an industrial point of view, that aims uh, at uh, detecting you know, these vulnerabilities, either in an automatic way uh, in, or manually, either uh, white boxing, for example, by doing static code analysis, or uh, black boxing. Um, uh, by the way, in uh, uh, 2009, uh, Italian friends of mine, who are Stefano Di Paolo and Luca Carettoni, actually, uh, presented in, uh, in OWASP, uh, Poland, a new uh, injection uh, vulnerability called HP uh, parameter pollution. And uh, since, uh, since that, 
time, I mean, has not been uh, studied and uh, is not much uh, known. Uh, that's why we did, we decided to actually invest some time in uh, uh, studying this new vulnerability and uh, we decided uh, this is what I'm going to talk is about. We actually designed an automated system for testing web application and the goal has been to, uh, uh, to study the prevalence of this vulnerability over the web. And um, so before going into the detail, I want to, um, to basically introduce a bit uh, how the application uh, usually handles the HTTP parameter so that you have an idea of, uh, of how it works. So basically, uh, um, when you interact with your web application, okay, you submit your, uh, your data, uh, for example, using a GET or a POST or a cookie. And uh, HTTP allow um, the same parameter to be provided twice. Uh, this is, for example, the case of a checkbox. So I don't know if the work links. So if it is, I don't know if I can click on this PDF. No, there is not this functionality in, uh, in this. Okay. So actually, if you go in this link, uh, there is a demo showing that if when you have a form checkbox, or whatever, you know, say which article you want to buy, the different article, you select the article, you submit the, the, the form. Uh, um, the same article uh, is repeated twice, for example, the same parameter. So, for example, you have article equal 1 and article equal 5 and article equal 10. Okay, so this, uh, the same parameter uh, with the same name called article can be repeated multiple times. So, actually, this is a feature of HTTP. Um, but the question that, uh, that comes is what happens when the same parameter is provided twice? So, for example, you have, uh, look at this, you have, you have Google, okay, you can search for Italy. Okay, so you have a parameter called Q, okay, that is equal to Italy, and then you can, uh, you can append the second parameter called Q equal to China. And uh, in this example, uh, what Google does actually concatenate uh, the, the two, uh, two values with the, with the space in between. Instead, if you do the same uh, test using Yahoo, you have actually that Yahoo accept uh, uh, the second parameter, the second value, that is China, instead of Italy, okay? So this show that uh, depending from the uh, technology you are, uh, you are using, okay, that is on the left, depending also from the web server you are adopting and uh, from the different methods, uh, you will have uh, server side actually uh, a precedent that is either on the first parameter, like uh, Italy, okay, either on the second one, or you can have actually, uh, for example, in Python, the different parameters are concatenated uh, into a list, or in ASP, you have them uh, um, appended together uh, by, by a comma. And, uh, okay, so there is nothing bad with, with this, actually. Uh, this is a feature of uh, HTTP, as I was saying before. The problem arises when um, the, the web developer is not aware of his, uh, of his behavior. And um, this is the case that uh, bring uh, um, this uh, HTTP, uh, let's say, parameter precedence, uh, being a, uh, uh, a requirement for setting up uh, actually the HTTP parameter pollution attack. Okay. So, uh, so let me introduce now now the attack. Okay, this is the client side uh, for of the attack. So uh, as Every client-side um, attack, such as process scripting, for example, you have uh, a site that is vulnerable okay, to these parameter pollution vulnerabilities, and you have the attacker that actually analyzes the site and find the site is vulnerable and create uh, what is called a trigger URL. That means a URL that when the attacker sends to their victims, for example, by mail or uh, over uh, social networks and so on, then, uh, the victim, the one of these victims, click on this uh, link, so I open this URL, and what it, uh, what it does, actually, it, uh, this URL open a page over the web, and this, uh, the website actually return to the, to the victim uh, in malformed page, it means a, a page that actually contains the attack. At that point, when the, when the victim actually interact with the page, what, uh, what uh, uh, the, the action that then is, uh, is run is, uh, is an action that is different from what the user is, 
is intended to do. So for example, uh, you can have, for example, um, suppose that you have your web application, your, your web mail uh, that, is, uh, that is vulnerable. So when the user, for example, click uh, on, a, uh, yeah, on a mail, for example, to read this mail, instead of reading the mail, the action that is carried out is uh, the deletion of this mail. Okay? So the attacker can force their victim to do something uh, unintended. Uh, but another example I can I can I can give you is for example uh, in a, in a social network it was possible automatically when the user was going to his uh, to his profile instead of going to his profile he was sending a friend request to, to the attacker so the, the attacker was able to collect a lot of friends in a, in a, in an easy and fast way. Um, here we see an example instead of uh, what is possible to do with this client side data. So let's consider an application where you can uh, actually vote for two candidates. Okay? So the application uh, takes a code action on GSP, it takes a parameter with call ID with the number of the, of the ID uh, of code. And this uh, application creates then two links, one for vote for candidate Y and one for candidate green. Okay, so as you can see, the value of the poll is used to build the two links. Okay, so what the attacker does, he creates this uh, uh, trigger URL, that is the URL you see there, and uh, send this URL to their victims. That is then when the victim visits this URL, they will see their, the page, okay, with the two candidates, but at the time when they vote, okay, even if they vote for the first one, for the second, they follow up for in voting, for example, for, for Miss Green. Okay? This is why it's because the, the attacker has been able to inject a new parameter called candidate with a new value called green inside the poll ID. And when this value is then uh, taken by replication, decoded and used to build the links, then this candidate green, uh, candidate equal green, uh, follow up into the links and follow up in a, uh, in a position that uh, is uh, uh, actually before the, uh, the original candidate. And the GSP, usually, uh, uh, when you have uh, two parameters with the same name, as I was uh, telling you before, that is here, the red line, what GSP does is actually to return to the application the first parameter. So in this, so in this example, uh, the, the precedence uh, given to the parameter is coherent with, with the attack vector, and the, this makes the, the attack actually uh, to succeed. Okay, so these 10 minutes were about uh, HP parameter pollution. So, uh, this is an example, a very example that we, for example, found. Here it was, uh, so this page is a page that the victim see, okay? When the victim wants to buy this product, this field, actually when he's clicking here, instead of buying this product, the victim full up and buy a different one, okay? Because the user has been able to inject into this uh, uh, application a new, a new product. And the same uh, is with, uh, with Facebook, okay? So here it's Facebook, there is a component called a, a share component, which is actually this component that is used to share the news over your profile. So you're visiting the site, one news is really interesting, you will, there are different buttons, one saying share on Facebook. You click, you insert your password, and you're reading Facebook, and you have this uh, article, this news uh, published on that profile, on that world. But it was possible, it was possible to overwrite uh, this behavior and make Facebook to share an application, a page that you choose. And this way the attacker can uh, force their victim to post on their profile a page to, the, to, to a site contain a uh, drive-by download, uh, for example, uh, JavaScript that infected an open browser or that contain you know, some spam and so on. So we, in this case, uh, HTTP can be used as a vector to propagate uh, a malicious site or uh, uh, or spam and so on. Okay, so that's about the client side version of the attack. Uh, HPP can be used to run uh, server side attacks.
So the server side attacks uh, um, are more difficult to detect because uh, if you don't have access to the to the code of the application, uh, you don't know what's what's happening server side. Sending the client side attacks, actually, you can see that the page that is returned to the to the client actually contains the injected parameter. So um, here in this example, you have uh, okay, you have uh, a new lab where uh, you can actually uh, print the employees uh, of this department called engineer. What it does, uh, actually, the application it builds a query server side for another web application that then query for the home database. So here, for example, it, 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 it's possible to, uh, to force the application to show you of these uh, of these uh, employees, not only their users, the list of users actually, but also their password. Uh, this is because uh, uh, it was possible to inject uh, a new uh, another parameter uh, called uh, what, okay? Then specify what you want actually, and uh, and you you want also the password. So if a if a if a database on the backend uses, for example, ASP, when they when they, when this application builds the query. Instead of querying only for the user, you query for user, comma, password. This is because ASP, as I was telling you before, when there are two parameters with the same name, what ASP does, it concatenates uh, the two parameters using a comma. And so it follow up into a query of a database where you have select user, comma, password, from blah, blah, blah. Okay, now, uh, since we, okay. Still have half an hour, but there are a lot of things to say, so I go a bit faster. So, parameter pollution can be used also to do cross channel pollution, that means to inject into a get to have a the parameter used in the post or vice versa. Uh, it can be used to bypass uh, cross site requests for three tokens. This is an example of the attacks discovered by, by Stefano uh, two years ago against a Yahoo mail. And uh, there are many the references at the end of the slide, so you can check out. An example, but basically Yahoo implemented a token to protect uh, sensitive information such as you know, delayed mails, open reading new mails, and so on, by using a token. You can use HPP actually to bypass this, uh, this token. Uh, HPP can be used also to bypass uh, web application firewall uh, by uh, exploiting the fact that, for example, in ASP you can concatenate the parameter. So actually what you can do, you can have a payload, for example, this is a, a standard SQL injection payload. What the attacker can do, it, it can split the SQL injection uh, payload into different uh, parameters with the same name, and then this parameter gets concatenated uh, after the, uh, the web application firewall. Okay, so this is about, uh, okay, we are at half of the slide, and now, Second part of the talk is uh, on the uh, system that we designed to actually uh, test this web application for uh, HPP. Uh, the system is based on, uh, on an instrumented browser that is uh, a modified version of Firefox. Okay, so at the beginning, I designed a system. I designed uh, a system as a, a standalone uh, HTTP client. But then I decided to embed actually all the logic in the browser. In this way, we have uh, uh, completely full support for uh, for client-side scripts such as uh, JavaScript. So actually, you can say to the browser, uh, visit this site. The browser take care of opening the page, render the content, uh, render the load different iframes, uh, and uh, execute uh, the JavaScript code and so on. Then when the page is ready. The page then is sent back to the crawler, and uh, the crawler then um, pulls with our two components, the scan, okay, that is the vulnerability scanner, and the precedence scanner. So the precedence scanner tests for the precedence given by the parameter. Okay? So we try to inject uh, different, uh, the same parameter with a different uh, name, but different, uh, with the same name, but different value, and check whatever application accepts the first parameter, the second one, or both. And the vscan is the test actually the page to see if uh, uh, it contains uh, some parameter that can be actually exploited by, by HPP. 
Um, I go a bit in detail of, uh, of the PSCAM. Um, so what it does, I uh, will send you, uh, determine the precedence of parameters when multiple occurrence of the same parameter are submitted. So let's consider an application called app PHP. So you have a parameter one with a parameter one. What it does, it creates two, two requests. One is with par one equal new value, and one is with, with both parameters, actually. So par one equal par one, and par one equal new value. What it does, it compares the page that are returned by the application when, when, uh, when these tests are run. And uh, using some heuristics that I don't want to explain here, but I have a reference to uh, I give you a reference of a white paper. Actually, we are able to see whatever application I set the first parameter or the second one. Instead of the VSCAN, uh, it is the scanner for uh, actually the, the vulnerability. Uh, what, what we do is that for each, uh, uh, suppose you have a, um, well, for each parameter accepted by the application, for example, a parameter called Q equal to three, like for example, of Google. We inject uh, this Alpha J26 full Alpha J3 bar that, that, that is the encoded version of AND full equal bar. We submit this application, this page to the application, and we check whatever in the console page uh, this AND full equal bar is included either in some of the links or in the forms. And um, we have different strategies on how to do it. Uh, Rapidly, for example, first uh, we inject uh, only on those parameters that appear both in the URL and in the page content. Okay, so suppose if you have a parameter Q and the page content of the parameter Q, you suppose that uh, this parameter is just used by application to build the links. So we have a parameter that uh, most likely uh, are uh, uh, reused by the application to build the page. So first we inject this parameter, then in both one that uh, um, appear in the URL but not in the page, so maybe the parameter has a different name, and then uh, in, uh, in the other set, so for those of that are in the page but not in the URL. We have then different heuristics to reduce the false positive, because at the beginning we had a false positive of about 4%, that is pretty high. So, okay, with these heuristics, uh, actually we, we managed to, to cut the false positive, up to, I think, 0.5%, uh, uh, something like that. And uh, you have more details in the white paper for this. What's more interesting for you, for, uh, for this talk, uh, is uh, actually the tool. So, so we implement all this system in a tool that um, I call it uh, PAPAS, that is an acronym for Parameter Personalizing System. And uh, so now Papas is, uh, is running. So I use this tool actually to run the experiment. And then uh, I, I decided to make it uh, free, uh, to put it online as a free to use uh, service that is reachable at uh, this address. So maybe I can, I can show you just what time should I finish? More than fast. So I still have 20 minutes. Uh, Is it work? No. The file is in action. Ah, it was. I think so. Maybe not. Yeah. Good. Okay, so. So actually the demo, uh, okay, well, you can show, start showing the site. So actually, you, um, what you can do, you can, uh, you can submit your site. Okay. So yeah, you can fill up. What do you want to do? Just here. Suppose you want to. It's everything here, right? So you fill up information. Here you see the scan depth. That means if you put uh, one, you just test the URL that you give. So this whole page. If you put three. You follow up the links you have on your own page, and then you follow up the links again until you go to the of free. And um, here you can specify other parameter, like you know, if you want to set some selling time, if you want to enable the piece card, the piece card, if you want to run an extensive mode, where you know, are some other interesting tests that are executed. And then you send uh, the, the site to be tested the application. Yes. Go. Okay. 
so the tool gives you this uh, token that you have to upload uh, in the file called papas.txt, uh, for example, on your website. This is to prove that actually you, you are the owner of a site, otherwise people can use this tool to test uh, other sites, okay? So the idea is to make sure that you are testing your own site. And then, when, uh, when you have this, um, what you do, you, you actually you upload it, uh, and then when you, okay, let's go and load and then uh, finish, so, uh, XD. so you create a file like this, you go to do like, uh, address to verify that the token is okay. So if I go now, you say that the token is not there, of course, so I upload it. This page. And you say, okay, valid token. So now the site is put in queue to be scanned. So there are two different browsers at the same time that run to make it more fast. And when it's finished, we will have the report sent to our main. Everything works. So let me now continue the talk in the meantime while the site is, is being scanned. So, what I did, I used Papas to scan a, a set of popular sites. So, I took, uh, I collect 5,000 sites from Alexa. So, Alexa has different categories uh, that I'm shown here. No? And what I did, I take, for example, 110 financial sites. Uh, I don't know some have uh, one for other shopping site, uh, one of the 17 social network site, and I, I, put the, I, said, I, I actually instruct Papa to scan them automatically. And uh, the idea was to evaluate how many of these will actually contain at least a single page that can be prone to be uh, affected by HP private pollution. And uh, we did it uh, in uh, 13 days. Uh, by using a single machine, a single IP. And um, so we actually test more about 150,000 unique pages. And um, what it come out is that, uh, uh, interesting, there are about 5% of the application okay, that generate errors when uh, uh, the same parameter is uh, uh, duplicated. For example, in Python, okay, when you have uh, the same parameter duplicated, Python build a list. And then, if you don't sanitize, actually you will have an instance that uh, of a single value, and so the application may be would crash. So, I can show you, for example, a, a screenshot of this that is uh, at the end of the talk, I don't know why, but... Mm, yeah, this one, for example. This is on another.gov, so... Uh, this is for example a page, you know, you have a, you have a normal, normal, uh, normal parameter called in 23, you inject a new parameter called uh, ID with value 24, the application concatenates these two parameters to give an error. So this 5% means that about 5% of the application do not, sanit do not actually, uh, they are not aware of a, of a problem and they don't uh, actually sanitize uh, the value uh, used by the, by the application. Then, uh, other interesting is that about 25% actually are inconsistent, inconsistent. That means that some, para, some pages accept the first parameter, some pages the second one, some pages both of them. That's not, nothing bad with that. It's perfectly safe if the developer is aware of HTTP thread. And this is not actually always the case. In fact, uh, uh, Papa discovered that about uh, 1,500 uh, website, that's about 40%. Contain at least a page uh, that uh, can be injected. That means the tool was able to inject this uh, uh, full equal bar and to verify that the return page actually contains this token in some of their links uh, on the form, on all forms. Okay, I want to say that this means that application is actually vulnerable, but uh, it's important to say that vulnerable is different from exploitable. That means uh, uh, vulnerable, you are able to inject the parameter. Exploitable is that an application where uh, the parameter inject, inject is actually used by the application. That means the parameter precedence is actually coherent 
we've, uh, we've, uh, we've where uh, the, the token as uh, this parameter has been injected, like in the example of the, of the pool I was showing you before. No? Uh, in the pool ID, in the pool at the beginning, if you manage to inject this new candidate green before uh, the normal uh, um, candidate, you are able actually to exploit the application. Otherwise, it's just an injection that will, will not bring you to actually the exploitation. So what, uh, this is the discussion exactly of, what, of what I was saying. So uh, what, I, what I did, I took this uh, 1,500 site. Okay, I validate all of them uh, with the tool uh, to see if the precedence was actually coherent with where the injection has been. Has been. And uh, it came out that uh, uh, of these 5,000 applications, 7,000 actually are really exploitable. That means that uh, the parameter can be actually used to, do, uh, to force the application to do something different from what it was supposed to do. And here you have, uh, depending from the different categories of site, you have how many actually of them are vulnerable and how many are exploitable. What is interesting is, uh, okay, first the number, that is, uh, in any case, uh, the, the average number is pretty high. The second one is that uh, sense it's a site that actually should be more sensitive uh, about uh, the problem, say like the financial one, <coughs> that are French, or government one, like the NASA or Gov. They are actually equally or even more affected by, by the problem. As you can see here, compared to the games category. So, this is pretty scary. And um, so we detect uh, uh, vulnerability in famous sites such as Facebook, Google, Symantec, Microsoft, PayPal, Flick, Fox Video, VMware. And in all the cases, I personally notified the security officer of these sites. And we have uh, often the problem were uh, fixed. So, some of the problems I already showed you, for example, the Facebook one or the shopping cart when it was possible to manipulate, uh, to force the, the user to buy something else, or even to manipulate the price of an item, so it was possible to buy a uh, product with a different price, with a lower price. On some banks, like US banks, uh, when actually you apply for a card, instead of, for a, of applying for that card, you can force your victim to apply for a different card. And uh, it's pretty scary. Uh, on PayPal, so you have a problem in the authenticated area of PayPal. So actually, you can configure a PAPAS uh, with, with a credential. So you open your Firefox, you put in the credential, you, you configure Firefox with a credential, and then you say PAPAS to not log out. So what PAPAS does, the tool, it tests uh, the authenticated area on the site. It's pretty interesting. And, uh, and Google, finally, it was possible to mess up too, with the with the result and to force the victim to, uh, to show on their, uh, when they look up for something, you know, they look up for uh, climbing, so I can force them and their victim to show something different on the page, so this can be used to, uh, for example, for spamming uh, purpose. So let me finish talking about, uh, uh, so let's see if uh, I receive the mail from the tool. This is my mailbox. If I need to connect uh, to the IMAP server. Wow, so. Okay, I will uh, maybe receive the mail. Okay, so in the meantime, I can say show you an example of a report. Oh, so here we have the. Okay, what you scan, how you scan with which presses. Uh, this is an example on, on our uh, institution, you recall. So how many pages I crawl, how many pages have been tested, how many pages are vulnerable, how many pages are, have been skipped or contain errors, okay? So when you have vulnerable pages, especially, it gives you uh, which figure out where the injection occurred, so either on links, on forms, and, uh, and the URL actually that exploit the, the vulnerability. For example, you have this few equal bar, for example, here, that. Uh, can be injected in this XXX parameter. And here you have the log of the precedence. So uh, for, for every page and for every parameter, you have a the precedence is on the first. Uh, A means after, so the precedence is on the second parameter, or you can have the precedence on, uh, on the first uh, parameter somewhere. And here you have okay, the, the full log of, the, of your scale. Okay, so, 
two different companies asked me, can we use Papas to test, uh, to test uh, our system? So I say yes. Some of them want the tool, so I'm not releasing the tool, we can use the service. So what we can do, we can set up a VPN to test the internal application, but uh, I won't give away the tool. So, um, okay, so this is Papas. Okay, so here you have the eye, the sky is complete, your report is now available. So actually you go here and you have, uh, I think, okay, any analysis report for this side. So this side, on this side there is nothing, so the report probably is almost empty, but this shows you a bit how, how the system works. So about the prevention, there are our right, first, uh, what you should do with input validation, this is always the case uh, with uh, uh, injection and web injection vulnerabilities, like you do in say, like for process scripting, uh, you verify that uh, there, are, uh, there are not uh, uh, JavaScript uh, uh, tags inside uh, your uh, value of your parameter. Here you verify that there are not encoded query string delimiters. That means the encoded version of the end. In the, the URL encoded version is version 26, then you, you can even want to check for double URL encoding or UTF-8 encoding and so on. The other idea is to use a safe method to handle the parameter present. For example, in Python, you have a, the method called getValue, which you usually use to get the value of the application. If a, if a user submit the same parameter twice, you will have a list, as I was saying before. So you can maybe want to use the get first uh, parameter and value get first method to, to, to have uh, only the first uh, parameter. Then you want to validate uh, where the data came from, come from. So if they are supposed to come from the post, uh, the data should come from the post and not should not be accepted by by get. And finally, raise awareness. Uh, this is why we have I uh, I we ask to give this talk uh, because uh, actually we discovered that a lot of application uh, are possibly uh, exploitable by this new class of uh, web injection vulnerabilities. So. Uh, Actually, our work, uh, our work will raise the uh, awareness about uh, this, uh, this problem. Uh, finally, there are uh, the uh, reference. So the one is the, the blog post of uh, Stefano in 2009 about um, the client-side version of SMP parameter pollution against the uh, Yahoo Mail. Then there is the, uh, my black tune of white paper there. And uh, the last thing uh, is the collection of different Source. Okay, this concludes my talk, so I'm open to questions, otherwise we go with the, with the system. If you have a question, feel free to, to ask. Either now or offline or by the as well. I'm 
intended content is forced the user to share over to file something different. No? Doing browser URL redirection, that means that the user will take click and get it something different. To steal the cookie okay, of a user, like in a cross script too, or to altering server side request. Yeah, great. That's, I think, was not, was maybe a bit more difficult than the other one. That you need to correct. So, Papas is a, a, a French fry with a star shape. <laughs> B, a fit to use system for anti HTTP flows. C, meaning for something belonging to the Pope. That means in Italian, Papas. <laughs> my favorite coffee brand. <laughs> and the last one, how to protect your company business from HPP? A. Ignore the problem by not using Papas. B. Redesigning the world business site and static bear HTML 1.0. C. The application should always accept the first parameter. Or D. Input validation, parameter precedence handling and channel validation. <laughs> exactly, great. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think this concludes the thanks. <laughs>